Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a heat kit. Laboratory oscilloscope. And the model is IO18. This is an all tube based oscilloscope from 1973. It's a one channel oscilloscope. But other than that, it's really beautifully made. Really nice and large, good sized knobs. I mean, it's really nice. Okay, it requires a little bit of cleaning. If you look closer here, you can see under the knob here, it's nice and clean, but yeah, some dirty. So I'll try and see if I can clean this up and make it looks nice and fine again. Yeah, this one is not straight. So I think if you unscrew this, you can clean it. <laughs> yeah, it's full of uh, dirt and such. Yeah, we got um, 10 tubes inside this one, so I can't wait to have a look. Yeah, there is uh, one little thing with this one. When I see mains cable cut like that, I always get real scared. I think maybe it's defect. So yeah, I, I need to open it anyway to get in and fix this. There's also another little thing I like to mention. Those handles, this is a standard Heath kit uh, plastic handle. It's not really good for something as big and heavy as uh, an oscilloscope like this. So please don't lift the, the units with the original handle here, you can break them, especially if you grab in the middle here and try to lift it. You know, you need to be all the way out in the sides, then it's probably all right, but it's better just to grab it under it and don't get hurt. Here's a funny thing. I saw this little lid here. So access to set access, that is a uh, brightness, by the way. That is hidden. <laughs> that is a funny. That's of course deflection amplifier. So that will be the signals to deflection. That's probably also deflection. If I'm not mistaken, that will be the two deflection amplifiers, right? So now we are inside. And this is of course the bottom. What's a big hefty transformer. <laughs> it's just really big. The mains wire, yeah, that is cut. And it looks a little special, see? Inside it is the safety protective earth. And you pull the wire apart and then it comes out here. So that's a little bit special. The way that it's quite flat makes it uh, easy for these little plastic snap holders here. So I don't know if I'm able to find a wire that is compatible. Um, at least I just have to remove this and put a wire through the hole at least and see if I can get this scope up and running. And then I can just pair this uh, at a later point. Um, yeah, like I said, it is of course uh, tube based. So you will see some tube sockets here on the bottom part. I had a few problems with a few of the potentiometers and switches. I couldn't move them and they were feeling really, really nasty. I also had a lot of really funny green fungus on the metal parts. You still see, well, this is the, see? Some white nasty stuff. But I tried to clean this as good as I could with uh, my paintbrush outside. So it's now nice and fine. And I cleaned and lubricated the potentiometers and switches here. I still massage them, them a little bit now and then when I can't buy it, so um, that's of course the input for the vertical. This is input for the horizontal. There's a little funny modification here. We got some two blue wires that's soldered together like that. I don't know exactly what is the idea here. It's probably not supposed to touch the metal. And what? See, that will be low voltage for the probably oh this is a voltage reference uh, voltage regulator tube 
So there was my voltage regulator tube. It was quite beautiful build. And here you see the some of the trimmers and uh, potentiometers are quite close located here from the back view. Really, really big CRT, and it's not um, magnetic shielded, so it's out here in the open, and that is probably why the transformer is mounted below deck. It's also good to have the mass as low as possible. It's really nice with this piece of uh, aluminium here. You can easily grab it and move it around. Yeah, that would be the deflection amplifiers. Oh yeah, we see some of the tubes. I don't know if you can see it on that one. But you got heat kit written on some of the tubes. Also on... See? So that's quite nice. That a double rectifier tube uh, for the um, tube high voltage. There's supposed to be a uh, diode, a single diode for the negative cathode supply, but I can't really find it. So that is uh, also what I'm looking for, because it's also nice to know exactly where you can't touch. And this is how this uh, whole scope is uh, working. It's running at a um, negative cathode of about uh, 1300 volts. There is a nice schematic available on the Radio Museum, so thank you very much, guys, for sharing that one. And maybe all that nasty high voltage part somewhere up here. I don't know. I'll go and have a look and see if I can find it. This one I thought was a voltage regulator tube. No, this one is the high voltage rectifier diode because. That one is the 470K filter for high voltage. And this rectifier diode here is the normal anode supplied for all the other tubes and all the other systems. And here is a 1K resistor in between those two capacitors as a filter for that system. So that is how it works. I really want to show you this diode again. And it is actually clear that it's a diode and not a voltage regulator tube. If you really look careful on it. Oh, the, see, there's a filament in there. Damn it, it's difficult to show you. I really want to show you this because at the first look, it really looks like a neon voltage regulator. So here is the high voltage rectifier tube. It is the... 1v2 and the fun thing about this rectifier tube is it's uh, directly heated and uh, the filament is only 0.6 volts and uh, yeah so that is uh, quite amazing if you look at the filament and also the input to that tube i'll be the two uh, orange yellow wires here right the fun thing is that one of them go directly over a trimmer like that. I kind of don't really like that. So that's a little bit of a weird kind of placement of that, isn't it? Yeah. This could have been marked with high voltage marks and stuff like that because it's really nasty. The distance to chassis on those, I mean, look at that down there. It's just a millimeter or something like that. But the voltage here is uh, 1400, negative 1400 here. So the AC potential here is probably a lot more, right? So that is not so good for safety isolation. I don't know if you can see down here. It is almost touching. I think I want to bend it like that to create a little bit of distance, but still, this is nasty distance. 
I think I found the problem for this scope. Look at that. Here is your super zoom distance. And look at that nasty corrosion. This has been arcs going on all the way. So that is why it was thrown out or something like that, right? It's also... Yeah, this, this is definitely the problem, right? I think this is my solution to that problem. Now the socket is mounted on the other side and I'm using plastic standoff and plastic screws. I just cut a thread in that material and this works pretty good. So now there's a good safe isolation distance. Also note this wire, I just cut it a little bit. So now it's not near anything else. Just easy. Oh, there's a little challenge with the mains entry. See, when I desolder wires here, if I get interrupted and need to continue another day, see, I mark <laughs> where to input power. And that cable here is a very, very flat and wide, kind of a little bit special, hard to find sort of a cable. And this one, of course, fits in this special uh, holdout plastic click-in thing. So I need to solve that at a later stage. Right now I'll just take a regular uh, cable like this one and just stick it through the hole, solder it, and then just um, just test that it is working. I guess that will be uh, that will be a little for later kind of challenge. So by the way, in the cleaning process, yeah, I cleaned the whole front here. It's nice and beautiful, and uh, yeah, all the knobs and switches uh, nicely cleaned and lubricated and uh, I'm not going to assemble everything here before I'm done with the testing because I don't know how many of those bulbs are not working and see this is the front plastic I tried to clean it as much as I could but see it is a little bit uh, scratched so after all that clean up and uh, diode fixing I feel I'm ready to do the first power on. Put all knobs in the middle and then I will slowly crank up mains supply and see if there's anything nasty going on here. So this is 100 volts and it's using 14 watts. So far everything looks perfectly fine with the power usage. And see, I get a nice bright bulb there. So that is 220 and it's using 80 watts. And I was hoping to see a little bit of a beam. Is there any? No, there's no horizontal, vertical. Focus. Oi, look at that. Focus is in the middle. That is a very, very good sign when you're playing around with old stuff like this. So this is the sweep frequencies. All right. Let's try and input um, something here, right? Look at that. So how's that working? Internal. Ooh, tricking is working. We should probably dim the light a little bit here so we can focus a little bit more on that. Oh, that green lamp. What have we got here? So this is all we got. Nice, focus. Oh, these are also in the middle. That is also a good sign. Need a little bit more, and that one. Ooh, look at that DC! <laughs> Don't you just love it? And then, ah, oh, so this is wow, quite interesting potentiometer. Look at that! So there's a big dead band in the middle of that potentiometer. Look at that, and then. Boing, and then I continue. Wow, look at that special potentiometer. Wow, is it 
Yes, it's also like that. So this is built into the potentiometers of these two. That is very, very rare to see this, by the way. Sometimes I also measure speed and all that on good old oscilloscopes. And this is now four megahertz of input. And I feel that this is about a 3 dB a bandwidth. So it's actually able to show that and uh, trigger on it. There's a little bit of difficulties with the, see? And it goes a little bit like that. Now it goes blurry. So I need to go and find the sweet spot. But I mean, four megahertz looks like that. Quite nice, right? And of course it works with external horizontal input as well so i can use my little xy plotter to make my little channel logo here on this one it was already presented in one of my videos so you are welcome to have a little look if you want yeah i put i had to put some tape over that otherwise uh, the camera is gonna go absolutely crazy